You know, I'm starting to put Derek Chauvin and Brett Favre in the same category as far as it comes to their spectrum on the legal system. Although what the crimes in which they committed are very different. Of course, you know what Brett Favre is with the money situation. Derek Chauvin is with the murder situation. So with Derek Chauvin, yet again, he's appealing the conviction with it when it comes to George Floyd. And it's over the same thing as he's been trying to get with that appeal in the past and that is where he believes he has not received a fair trial well i'm gonna say for the end of the article of why i truly believe he keeps doing all these appeals him and his team because he got a fair trial in my honest opinion he got a fair trial but i'm gonna tell you at the end why he believes he didn't get one derek chauvin the former minneapolis police officer Convicted in the murder of George Floyd is appealing his case to the Minnesota Supreme Court. Chauvin's lawyer, William Mormon, on Wednesday filed a petition for review with the state's highest court, arguing that the district judge's decision not to move the proceedings out of the city deprived his client of a fair trial. No, he thought that by doing that or by that happening, that meant that he was going to get off. But my thing is this. The whole world watched what you did. Like, literally, the whole world watched it. Like, it happened at the worst time for him because it was during the pandemic, so everybody was at home, so people had no other choice but to see it. It's not like people were going about their day. And you were recorded. Like, it was right there. Like, how could anyone have not seen that? People keep trying to rationalize and say that he was justified in what he was doing, but no, he, he really wasn't. He really wasn't. Again, let me continue because I want to get to my point. The petition comes a month after the Minnesota Court of Appeals upheld Chauvin's conviction for second degree murder and let his 22 and a half year sentence remain in place. Mormon had unsuccessfully asked the appeals court to throw out the ex officer's conviction for a long list of reasons, including the massive pretrial publicity. But the three judge panel sided with prosecutors who said Chauvin got a fair trial in just sentence. Chauvin raises several of those arguments again in his latest appeal. Floyd, who was black, died back in May, died on May 25th, 2020, after Chauvin, who was white, kneeled on Floyd's neck for nine and a half minutes despite his cries of not being able to breathe. Floyd's death ignited nationwide protests, some of which, no, international, because it was global, some of which turned violent and forced a national reckoning with police brutality and racism. Should the Minnesota Supreme Court agree to hear Chauvin's appeal, it would ask each side, each, each side for detailed briefs and later set a date for oral arguments. Mormon said the case pre presents the state Supreme Court with important questions on developing and clarifying due process requirements to transfer venue when there is unprecedented pervasive pretrial publicity coupled with community violence. He also wrote that it raises issues, potential juror misconduct. One juror participated in a civil rights event commemorating the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s march on Washington, D.C. a few months after Floyd's death. Only after the trial did the juror reveal that they had been there. The Court of Appeals declined to send the case back to the trial judge for a hearing on whether the juror's nondisclosure constituted misconduct. Chauvin pleaded guilty to a separate federal civil rights charge and was sentenced to 21 years in federal prison, which he is now serving in Arizona concurrent with his state sentence. Now that I have gotten through the article, let me just say why I believe he wants another, he wants this appeal. And this is really for me, all it boils down to some people might have a difference of opinion, but this is what I believe. The reason why Derek Chauvin wants this appeal to happen him and his team wants this conviction to be appealed or overturned or whatever the case may be is because he was convicted of what he did he probably thought that he was going to walk away from this unscathed like several of his comrades in separate precincts in different places across the establishment had done before him and not only that he got hit with one of the bigger sentences. You know, usually they're kind of low ball the sentence. But with him, he got over two decades behind bars. No matter where his sentence, like no matter where his sentence is being carried out of any prison, he's going to be behind bars for 22 and a half years. It's probably less than that now because he's already been in there for a couple years.
but it isn't the fact that he felt he was going to get off and he didn't. He probably felt the world was crumbling around him. He thought, oh, no one's going to convict me. And he found out in the words of Rob that day, he found out the world was indeed very correct. The same reason why his attorneys felt he should have been able to have his trial in another location because they felt like if they did that, people would have been, been a bit more lenient and got him off is the same reason they want this appeal is because they feel like with it, he'll be able to get off or at the very least lower the sentencing. But that's not going to work. Hopefully I don't want to say it won't because I got to remember what system we live in at the end of the day. So I don't want to jump the gun and get overly excited, but yeah, that's my interpretation as to why he wants this appeal or why he feels that this trial was wrong because he did not walk away from this. He actually has to face consequences. He's actually being held accountable for his actions. And it's very rare that you have a white cop, a white male cop at that who murders a black man on camera, get away with it. I mean, I'm um, not get away with them. Sorry. It's very rare that that happens. And he feels like that should not have been the case. He felt justified in what he did. And that's the mindset of many. Look at what happened with Daniel Penny and what he did to Jordan Neely and how people are calling him a hero. He didn't, Derek Chauvin didn't get as much people calling him a hero as Daniel Penny did. Now there's some parallels there. Uh, Derek Chauvin kneeled on George Floyd's neck for nine and a half minutes. And that caused him to pretty much be choked to death. Daniel Penny held Jordan Neely in a chokehold for 15 minutes and causing him to die. George Floyd was black. Jordan Neely was black. George Floyd in death got in face backlash. Jordan Neely in death faced backlash. You know, with George, with George Floyd, they kept bringing up all oh, his past and, you know, drugs and all types of stuff like that. With Jordan Neely, these 40 plus arrests and this, that and the third. But like I said, I don't remember Derek Chauvin getting called a hero as much. He did get some, but not nearly as much as Daniel Penny did. But that's really all it boils down to for me. Derek Chauvin is upset and his lawyers, I'm sure, because he ended up behind bars. Now, here's the thing. Wouldn't that have been funny if the judge or whoever allowed the trial to be moved to another state where he felt he would get a fair trial and those results were the same or even more intensified than what he received? Then what would they have said? They would have been like, oh, you would have just been better off. And that's the thing. Who knows? Maybe that judge was trying to keep them from going to another state because they probably would not have given him 22 and a half years. They probably would have given him more. So, Derek Chauvin, have you thought that maybe the judge was kind of looking out for your neck? Well, I don't even want to say neck for your uh, for you by not having you go to another state because they probably said 22 and a half. What is that? Give him 30. Again, the whole world was watching. I don't know what made him or his team think that going to another state would have made it more lenient. And then on top of that, they already knew the people were on edge. They knew that if, if Derek Chauvin walked away from this unscathed, they would have had a repeat of what happened in 2020. Meaning they would have had more riots. They would have had more protests and it probably would have been times 10. It would have been on a thousand. So they had to do the right thing. They had to throw him behind bars. They had to give him a sentence longer than 10 years like they did with Amber Geiger or what they gave Kim Potter with Dante Wright. They had to do it. Whether or not they wanted to do it, that's beyond me. If they don't say, I wouldn't know. I can't read minds. But they knew they had to do it. Because they knew if they didn't, it would have been hell on earth again. They did not want a repeat of what happened the week that Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd. 
But you know, Derek Chauvin and his team don't think that far ahead because they don't care. All they care about is him getting the client off, Derek Chauvin getting rid, get, uh, be, being able to go wherever he wanted, and them getting a check. Let's not forget that Derek Chauvin and his now ex-wife, his concubine, had issues with their taxes. Not paying Uncle Sam. Another criminal layer right there. Of course, nowhere near as intensive as him killing somebody, but criminality is criminality nonetheless. And besides, where would Derek Chauvin even go? Everyone has seen his face. Everyone knows what he looks like. There's no place he could go and hide in modern society. That's why where he's at, he's got to be by himself because they know not to put him in Jim Pop. They know not to put him there. Because they'll be waiting for him. As far as I'm concerned, Derek Chauvin, your safest place is behind bars where you're by yourself for 23 out of 24 hours in a day. For as, I don't know if he's in solitary confinement. I'm just throwing that out there. But he's by, I'm sure he's by himself. And I'm sure he has all the protection too. But that doesn't matter to him. That's not what he wants. He wants to be out and free and doing whatever it is he was doing before May 25th. Well, I'm here to tell him, and hopefully that stands, it ain't going to happen. You keep your ass right where the hell you are. Like I said, him being there is probably the safest thing for him. It's not what he wants, but hey, it's what he asked for. When he decided to do what he did to George Floyd on that day, he opened up Pandora's box as far as I'm concerned. Because I've never seen a response quite like that before when it comes to a situation like this in my life. So, I say just end this little crusade. I mean, they're going to continue to do it as long as they have appeals. If this one doesn't go through, they're going to continue to, I don't know how many appeals he has. But let them shits run out, and then once they run out and they're and it's over and said with, you know, it's over and done. Hey, just do your twenty two and a half years and hope for the best, and hope that you're still breathing by the time it's over. But then again, they might try to slip something in there on quote unquote good behavior, because that's what they did with Laquan McDonald's killer. They let him out on quote unquote good behavior. After he almost got them hands put on him when he got moved from one prison to the next. And then his wife coming out there saying that his kids need his dad. Well, you know, Laquan McDonald's parents needed their child. At least they'll be able to see him. Unfortunately, unlike Laquan McDonald's parents, the only way they can see him is by going to his grave. And that was another one that was all the way messed up, too. But I'm not going to get into that. That story, unfortunately, is, you know, is pretty much done with. But Derek Chauvin, what is this saying? You do the crime, you do the time. You just better be very fortunate that you, all you got was 22 and a half years. Is black men behind bars right now who are doing longer sentences for weed? There was a story I just did on a black man a couple weeks ago who got 70 years in prison for allegedly spitting on some cops. Now, while I don't condone, condone anyone spitting on anybody because that is a very disgusting act to do and that is the grounds for getting your ass beat, 70 years for that is absurd. He got more time behind bars as far as a sentence goes than Derek Chauvin got for killing somebody on camera. So don't sit up here and tell me that you feel like you wasn't being treated fair, Derek Chauvin. That black man was treated unfairly. So as far as I'm concerned, Derek Chauvin and his team can take this so-called appeals that they want to get to get him off or to get him a lower sentence and go straight to hell. 